Thank you very much. Um, so we're going to talk today about a project that we have been doing um, together with Carto. Um, if it pops up, um, which is called the Atlas of Inequality. This is a project that one of the um, social problems that we have in our, in our cities. And um, I can talk without transparencies, but it would be much fun uh, if I use the transparencies. Here we go. Uh, so this is a project that I've been doing both at MIT and the University of Carlos III. And um, I don't know how to. Okay, so um, I'm bringing you today um, one of the last reports of the European Commission, uh, which is the future of cities. Uh, but pretty much you can read this anywhere in the, in the web today. Cities are basically where our social life is, gonna hap is happening today, and it's going to happen in the future. By 2050, 75% of the people are going to live in cities in the, in the world. Um, and, but cities have a lot of problems. And actually, this report that you can see here, this future of cities, uh, is mentioning... Uh, seven problems which are very intertwined between them. One of them is very environmental impact, the aging in our cities, the housing problems that we have in our cities, the labor markets, because most of our companies are actually embedded into our urban fabrics, uh, the new forms of government, governance, and you can see around uh, the new modes of mobility that we have in our city. But today I'm going to talk about one specific problem that we have in our city, which is social segregation. And actually, I didn't uh, talk to Javier this morning or before preparing the transparencies, but I'm going to talk today also about the where and the why of this social segregation. I'm going to talk about the places, and actually I'm going to take it why we are segregating in our cities. When you talk about segregation in our cities, uh, if this thing goes... Yeah. When you talk about segregation in our cities, this is a typical picture that you have. This is talking about the where. So this is actually the Mexico, Mexico the city, and you can see two areas. One which is on the left is very slum-like, so you might think it's a poor area. Pretty close, actually 10 meters away from a rich area. This is what people have in mind when they talk about social segregation or inequality in our cities. And actually, uh, this is actually the... Um, we want to challenge this idea, this idea that most of the segregation that is happening in our cities and most of inequality has to do only with the where. We are going to challenge this by using high uh, precise and high frequency location data that comes from Cubic, which is a company that is dealing with these uh, location-based services. And we have gathered data from 11 cities in the United States. These are the most populated uh, metropolitan areas in the United States. Pretty much what you have seen, we are, you're going to see today, is not about just the city, but the whole metropolitan area. So for example, the Boston metropolitan area contains large areas of New Hampshire, and, and, the, and the city and the uh, area around uh, New York contains Long Island, New Jersey, etc. Um, we have a lot of people actually to, uh, which we use in, in, in this database. We have around 4.8 million of people, and we have the database, database for, for six months. So one of the things that we wanted to do is to challenge this idea that the word matters. And we found the following thing. We found that anybody in the, uh, on, on average, let's say, in those areas, 75% of the times, you encounter someone, you share a space with someone, pretty much like you are doing, you are doing that right now, you happen to be meeting with people that live more than 15 kilometers away from you. 75% of people you work with, 75% of people you collaborate, 75% of your friends live more than 15 kilometers away from where you live. So you want to understand the, the segregation in our city, we might have to go beyond the where. We have to actually start thinking about the why. Why we are segregating? Why not encountering other people from other areas? Let me show you a video of the data that we are using. This, uh, this actually was not prepared. So Javier, uh, this morning, was talking about the where and why. It was not prepared because we are doing the same thing. Why, where and why, actually, is segregation happening? It's not happening in our neighborhoods because most of the things that we do happen to happen, actually, away from your neighborhood. So where is happening and why is happening? So let me show you a video. Sorry, this. Let me show you a video in which you, what you're going to see here is basically our data set. Each of the points that you see there is, I don't know if you can see them, this is actually Boston uh, downtown. And uh, you can see here, this is the Charles River. Okay? What you can see here are people that are staying for more than five minutes there. The colors are basically a proxy for the income. And this is the time of the day. You can see that when the day starts, there's a lot of people actually getting together from different economic backgrounds, downtown, in the hospital areas 
even within the airport. There's also, here is the Media Lab, here is the Harvard Square, et cetera. You can see places in which people from different incomes get together. And those places are not segregated. But there are also other places in which only red people get together with red people, which means that low-income people get together only with low-income people, also here in these areas. So we want to understand where are those places? Where are those places in which people from different incomes get together? And why? Why those places are visited by people from different incomes? So to do that, the first part, uh, we have developed this atlas of inequality, which is basically two that you can, it's, it's actually online, uh, inequality.media.mrt.edu, in which basically we have 1.2 points of interest in our cities. Each of, each of these points of interest is, for example, a restaurant, is the university here. You can actually go around and see all the restaurants, the shops, the train stops, etc. And all of them are colored according to what we call inequality of the place. What is the inequality of the place? It's basically how uneven is the distribution of incomes of the people visiting that place. So a very unequal place with 100% inequality is a place which is visited only for one income group, by one income group. And a place which is very equal is a place which is visited by all the income groups in the city. Okay? So you can see here something which is astonishing for us is that you can see a lot of red points together with blue points. Even just across the street, you can see points which are red and blue, which means that in 10 meters, you can go from a very unequal place to an equal place. You don't have to move from the Bronx to downtown Manhattan. You just have to go from one side of the street to the other to actually meet different people. Okay? Actually, it's so astonishing that we, what we did was the following. We, we get all these 1.2 million, million points of interest and what we produce is this plot, which is a very complicated plot, but this is a computational, uh, this is, sorry, a, a, a conference in data science, in which basically each point there is the average of all the places in our data set that belongs to one of the categories in the four square hierarchy of categories. So basically you have, for example, you have there, you have here uh, places which are uh, uh, schools, uh, you have also places which have to do with work, also places that have to do with medical, and also places that have to do with leisure and entertainment. Okay. And this dimension measures how segregated are those places, in average, in the 11 cities that we have in the United States. And this dimension measures how far you have to go to go to these places. So typically, the places like grocery or supermarkets or the schools, you have to travel less than 10 kilometers to go to those places. But if you want to go to the airport, like for example here at the gate, or to a science museum, you have to travel a lot, okay? So you can see that there's a correlation between how unequal are the places and how far they are, of course. I mean, airports, by definition, there are probably a few of them in your city, so most of the people that have to travel by a plane have to go to the same place. So this is very unequal. But not everything is explained by the distance you have to travel. You can see here, for example, that the workplaces, the office is as segregated as the average place segregation in the United States, offices, but factories and warehouse are uh, around 30% more segregated than offices. So workplaces, yes, are less segregated, but not all of them are segregated. And actually, you travel the same amount of distance to go to a factory than to your office, and they are different segregated, okay? So the category of the place matters. Actually, your choices, I'm gonna convince you that the choices you make in your life and the opportunities that you have in your life matter. And those choices and those opportunities are gonna de de determine how segregated you are, okay? It's even so it's even so that we did the um, we did this thing by restaurants, I don't have the transparency here. Even the type of food that you like matters. The most segregated restaurants in the United States are Latin American and fast food. Okay? Those restaurants are highly segregated. And the less re the segregated restaurants are American, Tex Mex, and Asian restaurants, except in Chinese. Okay? So just the choice of food that you are gonna have to, um, take today well, probably I'm, you're gonna stick around for the good. But if you are gonna go for dinner, that choice is gonna matter for the segregation that you're gonna experience. It matters so that you can, for example, we, have this, we did this exercise of, does it matter the opening of a single business in my neighborhood? Does it matter for the inequality? So what we did was the following. We monitored what was the impact of a famous restaurant opening in the Boston area. I don't know if you know Prudential Hall, it's a, it's a, it's a mall in downtown in Boston, which is a upscale, let's say, mall. And in uh, November uh, 2016, Italy opened in, in Boston. Italy is a, 
is, I mean, I don't want to make publicity of this place, but it's a, it's a, it's a restaurant plus it's a, a grocery. You can find also um, many different things, uh, many Italian products there. What we measured was the inequality of the area before and after the opening of that business. And what we found is that, of course, malls are less segregated than in general than any place in the city. They are less segregated because they put together a lot of people from different backgrounds. So in general, malls, in this case, was 15% less segregated than the whole area. But just the opening of this decreased inequality by 10%. So just a single business opening in a mall actually decreased the total segregation of the area by 10%. So we wanted to go farther than this. This is actually, I'm still talking about the where. I haven't talked about the why. I, I kind of hinted a little bit why we are segregated. It's because of our choices. For example, you spend a lot of time in schools, if you spend a lot of time in offices, or you spend a lot of time doing grocery, or you spend a lot of time at home, you're probably segregated. So what we did was the following. We took our 4.8 million people, and we ran a model. Actually, this is a very complicated machine learning model in which basically we included all the variables that we expected to have impact on the segregation of an individual. What I mean by the segregation of an individual, I mean the amount of people that you see every day in your life and how unequal is that distribution of people that you see every day in your life. So a person which is segregated many is, it means that is, this person is only encountering people of his own group. A person which is not segregated is a person which is encountering people from many different groups, income groups in this case. So what we found is actually that 55% of the inequality that a person experiences in the United States comes from behavioral features, from the choices that you make, from the restaurants that you choose across the street, not from where you live. Only 45% comes from your race, age, employment, um, uh, income, et cetera, variables. Okay? So these are very simple model in which basically you split the variables. So what matters, the why, what matters is the places that you visit. It's not actually where you live. Where you live is still important. It amounts for 40% of the segregation that you experience in your life. But more than half of the segregation that you experience in your life comes from the behavior. So you want to understand our cities. We have to start, as Javier was saying this morning, the where is important. It's still important because it's, it's actually where things happen are, are important. But it, we have to start thinking about, more about the why. Because I was telling you, if we are segregated and there is inequality in our cities, that is happening 15 kilometers away from where you live. Okay? So we have to still to talk about the neighborhoods, but probably we have to start to talk about behaviors. And that is very good news for the people that are working in inequality. Because I cannot helicopter people around in the city, but I can probably steer people's behavior a little bit to change how unequal are the experiences of everybody in big cities in the United States. Thank you very much. <laughs>